my first question would be like uh, how you see the stock market i i would like to understand from the ba- very basic so what is stock market and how does it work so could you please explain me well the idea of a stock market is basically for regular people to invest in the wealth of a corporation that's growing that was the original idea so people could um find a way of using the money putting the money to work in a way that um made sense and at the end of the industrial revolution when the stock market first started to um expand itself it was only for the rich people because mm-hmm. more, most rich people couldn't afford to go in the stock market but today it's um, become a totally different animal to what it started out to be Today, the stock market is a major casino. In fact, it's kind of worse than a casino. It's a gamble. It's nothing like it was meant to be to begin with. It's used in a, in a way that um, is mainly uh, probably 80% of all trades are used by computers. Mm-hmm. And it's all automated. And they use logarithms to um, trade maybe for fractions of a cent um thousands of times so people who are doing it for themselves are actually got a much harder way of expanding the wealth by going into it today but there is a way of doing it i mean that there is a way of doing it and you can overcome the system that they've got which is stacked against the individual and it's also stacked against hedge funds and mutual funds and everybody else because basically it's a battleground mm-hmm. and the, the, the people who um, are buying stocks uh, have got a battle with people who short stocks and shorting stocks means selling stocks that you don't own mm-hmm. and that's the way of trading you can sell a stock that you don't own and um, you, you are hoping that the stock's going to go down not going to go up so those people are fighting the people who are wanting the stocks to go up. That's kind of um, a simple way of explaining what's going on in the everyday world of the stock market. But we can get into the ways it works and what people can do for themselves to invest for themselves. Mm-hmm. So for the way in- I look at it, go ahead. Yeah. So for investing in the stock market, what what are the basic criteria someone should know before investing into the stock market? First of all, don't invest any money that you can't lose. That's the number one criteria. Okay. If you can't afford to lose the money, and your lifestyle will be affected, if you put money into it, do not go into it. It's like going into a casino. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go into a casino and you're going to gamble, and then you're gambling money that you can't afford to lose, then fine. But if you go in with a few dollars and you want some entertainment for an hour or two, and you can afford to spend 50 or $100, and it doesn't matter to you when you lose that money or not, then, and you more likely will lose it. So then you, you uh, it's an entertainment. But when it comes to investing money, mm-hmm. if you accumulate money over your lifetime, and you want to build up some security when you're younger, then what you need to do is start to research companies that, number one, have great management. Mm -hmm. Number two, are going to be around in 10 years' time, whatever they're going to be doing, if it's a high-tech company, they've got uh, things that they're doing in their technology (laughs) that is ahead of third. And they're going to be around in 10 years' time, only by the company. So great management, very good prospects for future growth, mm-hmm. mainly not overvalued. The companies are valued by earnings. And the company you would buy into has to have good earnings, and it has to have a low P-E ratio. It's, um, P-E ratio means price to earnings. So for instance, if a co- if a stock is selling at ten dollars mm-hmm. and the um, they earn a dollar a year, 
mm-hmm. in earnings. So they had 25 cents a quarter, and the full year earnings would be a dollar. That would give the company a PE of 10, which basically, if it's a growing company, that's a fair value of stock. Mm-hmm. But in today's market, the way it is now, the regular day stock, uh, I've got PE values of 18, which in my mind is highly overvalued, but it's acceptable by most people that are investing in it. But what these people don't understand is that when growth stops and a recession hits, that PE value is no longer relevant. And the ones that got a PE of 10, and they're still growing, and they've got good prospects, they represent much more value. So you've got people that invest for growth, and you've got people that invest for value. Those are the two criteria. There's lots more criteria, but... Those are the two ways people would be investing. And you, if you've got value and growth, mm-hmm. and you, you buy stock that's out of favor with the market, that's why it's got a low PE, yet it's one of the best in breed, then that stock is a good way to start investing. And the way we start investing is, say you've got $1,000 to invest, mm-hmm. then first investment in the company would be hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So if the stock is trading at ten dollars, and you know it's going to be around for a long time, you know it pays. Also, if they pay dividends, the stock, then that's also a good criteria because you're going to get a return for your money. So you got dividends, you got growth, and you got good value. Then you want to put a thousand dollars in. You put hundred dollars in to begin with, and you add it into the stock. And when you put the hundred dollars in and it goes down say to nine dollars mm-hmm. stock then you put another hundred dollars in but you make sure you're looking at the news of the stock and you're knowing what's going on with the company and the prospects aren't changing too much but the general market as a whole is going down so this is going down with the rest of the market and then if it goes back to 10 you sell that first hundred dollars that you put in and you're back to, you've already earned $100 on your money, and you've got your money back from the first $100 that you put in. So you now got to run to nothing. You can leave that first $100 in now forever, because it's cost you nothing, that first $100. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, you're right. So, Mr. Mike, so, uh, yeah. one, one more thing I have doubt here, that there are more than lakhs of companies, right? So, most of them are public listed. So most of them, uh, most of the companies, they are into stock market. They are registered in the stock market. So people who are going to invest. So most of the time we will be knowing about only the topmost companies in the stock market. We will not be knowing about all the companies who are registered in the stock market. So is there a proper yeah. research needed for this? All the companies that are in the stock market are all listed. They're going to be listed to go onto the exchanges. And they've got very strict criteria to meet before they get accepted into the exchanges. There are private companies out there that do IPOs, which is called Initial Public Offerings. Mm -hmm. And those are the private companies that you can get information about. Um, But they're very risky. You don't know whether they're going to make it or not. And by the time they're going to come to market, they've already got all the investment in it. Right. So, uh, for the for the common people, if they want to invest in the stock market, so first of all, they need to research on the company and how the management is, and where the future will be of the company. But I was trying to understand that there are many companies about whom we don't know. So, uh, we should go with the known company only, or we we can go with the unknown company also after. There are, there are no known companies that we don't know. Every company has to report every quarter. And every quarter's earnings is publicly announced mm-hmm. and available for research for everybody. So mm-hmm. there is no companies on the stock market, whether it's the NASDAQ, whether it's the New York stock market, or the uh, penny share market. Every stock that's out there has to report earnings every quarter. Otherwise, it gets delisted. And if it gets delisted, you can't invest in it anyway. So every stock is available. Now, also... <clears throat> If you don't want to spend your time um, 
researching stocks, mm -hmm. what you can do is buy index funds. Mm -hmm. Now, an index fund is what they call an e, 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 ETF, electri electronic traded funds. Mm -hmm. And what these funds do, they take a basket of companies and they could be, say, high-tech companies. So a high-tech ETF would be one that you could invest in and it would probably have 50 or 100 or maybe even more than that of the high-tech companies and you're doing a whole basket of companies. So in other words, they'd have Microsoft in it and Intel and Apple and these companies are in a basket. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens with those ETFs is if the index of the market goes up, the S&P index, mm -hmm. then these stocks will go up with the indexes. And if the indexes go down, then they'll go down with the indexes. And they more or less rely on the macro. And the macro is what's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. So what you, when you're investing in stocks, there's two ways you're investing. There's company news on what the companies are doing. Mm -hmm. And then there's overall picture of what countries are doing and what's going on in, on the global scene. And when there's going to be recessions, what's going on in China, what's going on in Russia. Um, these things can affect the, the market prices. So today, America's put tariffs in China. So that's affected the markets. And the stocks have come down a little bit, but they keep, they keep recovering. And the main thing in the market today is the greed factor. Mm -hmm. And the greed factor is running the markets. And that's because... In 2008, there was a big meltdown in the markets and the financial uh, companies came to the precipice of a lot of them going bankrupt because there was a collateralized mortgage note scandal where people were putting money into housing and it was the biggest fraud that's ever been perpetrated. Nobody's gone to jail from it. But what happened, because of the, of the problems that they caused, interest rates went down to zero. And because for 10 years, the Federal Reserve kept interest rates at zero, it made people put money into the markets because they had nowhere else to put money. So they were throwing money into the markets. It's become a bigger problem than what we had in 2008. That's why a lot of stocks are overvalued like they are. Right. Right. And investing in the stock market for the short term is beneficial or for the long term it's beneficial more? Well, there's no such thing as long term. Nobody lives long term. And my philosophy is if you've got a profit, take it. You know, it does, it, there's 6,000 stocks out there that are all listed mm -hmm. and little bit of sweet. So, like I said before, with the laddering, if you ladder into the market, and you, you are not greedy mm -hmm. and you pick say five stocks out that you want to invest in mm -hmm. and you've got a thousand dollars to invest well do one at a time to begin with and say you wanted to invest in a stock at ten dollars like i said if it goes down to nine you buy another ten mm -hmm. if it goes down to eight you buy a, 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 another another hundred dollars worth and if the eight dollars goes to nine then you sell that and then you've, you've got some profit back on it and you keep trading it there and back in this laddering effect. Mm -hmm. Now, if you buy up to 10 and, and it goes, goes up, then, and they come out with um, a statement saying the prospects are even better than they thought they were going to be. So you can buy another 100 shares in it because that means it's better than you thought. So then you can buy it on the way up as well. But not too much of that. And then if, if one of the stocks that goes from, let's say it goes to 11, mm -hmm. and then from 11 to 12, and you bought 100 at 11, so sell them, and then it gives you, uh, again, a free ride on the first lot that you bought. So you can keep doing that, and then you can look for another stock and do the same thing with that stock. And you, when you've got five stocks in your portfolio, blend mm -hmm. up in your zero, because you've taken your profit, on your laddering technique mm -hmm. and you've still got money to invest and you've got five companies that you've invested in and they cost you nothing. Zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Mr. Mike, what are the changes you are seeing in the stock market when you started in your young time, when you were young, that time and now? Do you find any changes? Well, there's, there's always been greed in the market, but today the greed is on a much higher level. Mm-hmm. The um, the manipulations on a much higher level, mm-hmm. and um, it's more robotized today than it's ever been, and. That also leads itself open to hacking, mm-hmm. where people can hack into those systems, and if they can cause a, a, what they call a, a, a flash crash, and they can knock the market down three, four thousand points uh, mm-hmm. once they infiltrate it. So, like with all technology, because it's more technically orientated today, mm-hmm. it's become far more dangerous for anybody to invest. My rule of thumb is. If you're over a certain age, say you're over, say, 50, Mm -hmm. you don't invest quite as much. If you're over 60, less. And if you're over 70, a lot less. Because it can take 20 years sometimes to get your money back. And um, if you're 70, you can't afford to wait that time. So never put all your eggs in one basket. And today, you can can get, um, you can invest in bonds. And uh, government bonds in the US, you've got US bonds. You can get two and a half percent on a one year treasury bill, which is far safer than investing in the stock market. You're not getting a lot out of it, two and a half percent, but if you've got a lot of money to invest, then it's a lot better for you to get two and a half percent on your money that you've earned all of your life. So if you're over 70 years of age, I would invest, I would advise people to go into bonds, but no more than t- one year bonds. Never go into more than one year out. Only uh, double or triple A bonds mm-hmm. and be happy with small returns. Don't, so the more return you get in a bond, the higher the risk that that company could go bankrupt. So if you're investing in corporate companies in bonds, there's a much higher risk than investing in corporate, in the uh, government bond. Right. Uh, Mr. Mike, there is a very famous saying from Warren Buffett. You might have heard about that. That he says that it's, quite impossible it's nearly impossible to lose money in the stock market whether and whereas people the common people we think like it's very very difficult to earn make money from the stock market so what do you recommend what do you think on this if he said it's impossible to make money to lose money in the market it might be for him but he's lost a lot of money in the market at certain times in his life and he's not got every winner that he, uh, he had IBM for a long time and um, he lost a fortune on that. So um, he's, he's made some big things and he got out of it and now that stopped recovering and it looks like it's recovering quite well. So he got out of it at the wrong time. Anyway, um, it's harder for regular people to make money because they're indoctrinated by what the financial advisors tell them. Mm-hmm. And what I say to people is, who's got the most vested interest in the money that you earn? You or your financial advisor? And if the stocks all go down and you're losing your money, they still get their money. They're the house. They're the casino. And they're, you're paying them commission. So if you're paying them commission, then you're not putting the, you put all your money to work for yourself. You, you, some of your money is going away to those financial advisors. Why mm-hmm. pay anybody it's, if you've got intelligence? Mm-hmm. And that goes back to the first lecture, the, the first talk that I gave you, that if you use your intelligence, then you'll be able to invest for yourself. Now, I've written a book on the market called Invest with a Genius. Mm-hmm. Now, you can, you, can, you can download that on Kindle mm-hmm. for a few dollars. There's a new issue of it, and it came out in 2010. First came out in 2003. One or two things in it are slightly out of date. Um, I did mention Greenspan in it, and I've changed that a little bit. But that's when it was written at the time when Greenspan was the Federal Reserve Chairman. Mm-hmm. But most of the information in that book is very relevant to today. There's 21 or 22 different aspects of where you should be investing your money. And then there's a spiritual side to it as well. There's some poetry to it. I'm going to read you a poem from the book. Mm-hmm. I've got the original book here. 
Uh, yeah, the original it's... book has been redone, like say, in 2000 and 2010. <laughs> but let me read you a poem from it that I wrote, yeah. which kind of sums up what the market is like today and how people need to be cautious. And it's called The Gravy Train. Take a ride on the gravy train. Clickety-clack on a track to a game. Wealth and fortunes to a destination with no name. No signal to stop, but get in the station from whence we came. The journey of a lifetime, seeing loving money. Hands in the pots, grabbing all the honey. No time to taste the sweetness, collecting all the jars. Blinded to the sidings, filled with rusty cars. Looking out the window, see the earth whizzing by. Still stoking up the furnace, driven to be the fastest to fly. Racing with all the locos, missing nature's beautiful shows. Messengers with no message, answers only the devil knows. Coming to the end of the track, alas no brakes. Crashing into oblivion, ego is all it takes. All the wealth piled high, smouldering in a heap. Around in circles, in the abyss of the deep, mankind weeps. If only love could be found, but where do we look? Born in happiness, consumed in money, because greed overtook. Bliss is waiting, quiet and still, for us to switch on the power. Time to use our own free will, arriving on spirit's hour. Whoa. Now, that, uh, that's a poem mm -hmm. to yes. give you an insight into your own being and what the stock market's about and what we are about as human beings. Now, this, now, this was everybody... Really this was really and, great, Mr. Mike. So basically, you have combined both the spiritualism and the stock market, the business part. Both people can look over. Yes, that's why my book, Invest with a Genius, is very, very unique. Mm -hmm. There isn't another book in the world like it. Because at the same time of learning how to invest in the market, you're learning at the same time how to invest in the genius that God gave you when you were born. Yes, I Whatever religion you are, whether it's Buddhist, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, Jewish, whether you're an atheist, whatever it is, everybody has been given the chance to live with a genius when they were born. And that genius will show them the way once they learn techniques of investing in the market, which that book, my book spells out every technique you need to invest in the market. And I've done it for over 50 years very successfully. Mm -hmm. So I've proven it can be done. And I'm a guy that's left school at 16. I've not had an education. And it's not come from anything that education's given me. It's been self-taught. And when I say self-taught, it's, it's being taught by the genius within ourselves. So I've been tutored by intuition. And the intuition came from a part of each human being that's the eternal part of who we are. That feeds our intelligence. Now, the finite part of what we live is the intellectual part, the part that tells us we're clever and we think we can invest like Warren Buffett or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. So that part will make people lose money. And over time, now, Warren Buffett's a great guy. He's fantastic. So, for me, I retired at 46 because I didn't want to be uh, the richest man in the graveyard. I'm not interested in making fortunes. When you've got enough to live on each day and you can have a comfortable lifestyle, 
you can feed yourself and your family, you can help your friends around you gain their wealth. And remember, to give is divine. And to accept is also divine, as long as we accept from God. So God will give us what we require if we allow it to happen and we don't allow our cleverness to get in the way of it. So, Mr. Mike, our last question would be for you. What is your future goal? Uh, to make money or to have a, a wonderful life? Whatever you have. My future goals, my future goal are uh, to keep breathing as long as possible. <laughs> That's how my goal was. And, and, that, and that includes, and that means keeping healthy. And again, we wrote a book with my wife, Margaret, in 2015 called Well, Well, Well. Eat well, think well, live well. It's on my website, pointoflife.com. So if you get well, 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 and if you read that book, you're investing in your health and you'll keep breathing as long as you possibly can because you'll do the right things for your body and your mind to eat well, think well, and then you'll be able to live well. And by living well, that will include your wealth and your finances. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to invest your money in the, the most authentic way. You, more importantly than that, you'll be able to make money for yourself outside the risks of the market. And whatever profession you'll be doing, or whatever you're going to be doing in your life, mm -hmm. you'll be doing it at the best of your ability. And you'll enjoy doing it. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're enjoying doing it and you love what you're doing, you'll make a lot of money at doing it. So you'll make a lot of money at what you're going to be doing because you love doing it. Because you love doing it, you'll be doing it better than anybody else will be doing it. And that's what I did. All the people that tried to pull me down over the years when I was in business, and all the people that tried to do dirty deeds on me, all, nearly all, not all, but nearly all went bankrupt. Mm. Because karma, karma came into it. Karma is a universal energy that works for us all. And if you're doing something devious, and you're doing something against what you're meant to do in your life, then you're only defeating yourself. So in karma, don't do any harm to anybody else. And don't do any harm to your own body and mind by putting the wrong thoughts there. Don't give yourself negative thoughts. Don't feed yourself the wrong foods and don't go down the wrong lifestyle just because somebody else who calls themselves a guru wants to rope you into their way of thinking. There are no gurus in this world. A real guru will tell you, don't follow me. That's what Buddha said. Don't follow me. Follow yourself. I'm here as a guide for you, but you're your own Buddha. You're your own Muhammad. You're your own Jesus. You're your own Moses, and you're your own no thing if you're an atheist. You're your own thing of whatever you deem yourself to be. And that own thing is godlike whether you want to believe in God or not. It doesn't matter because it still operates. It still works because every cell in your body operates through intelligence. And if you understand that intelligence is working 24-7, 365, even while you're sleeping, so with the right investments, you'll make money while you're sleeping. When you're working during the daytime, you won't use the word work, you use the word play, because you're playing at your work and you're enjoying it. There's no, there's no effort involved in it and there's no stress because you're enjoying it. You're taking the stress element away from it and you're not going to allow any other human being to stress you out, whether it's your boss at work or whether it's whoever it is um, that's with you. You're not going to allow that stress to affect the way you're thinking. And if that makes sense to you, that's why I wrote the books. Because I can't be around and be with people all the time. And if a person isn't willing to spend a few dollars to get it down on Kindle so they can research it for themselves, and that's why I made it cheap for people to do that. My most expensive book is $5 on a Kindle. 
That investment genus is about three dollars or so, something like that. So it's no money, basically. And I don't advertise, I don't use PR, and I'm not interested in making a lot of money out of selling books. So not many people know the books even exist. <laughs> yeah. But what what I do know is one day when somebody in high technology and the want to feed people real content, then I'll be contacted. And the content that I have for them is vast. I have a vast reservoir of content. And that content can go into an app or into a new way of helping people meditate, helping people stress less, helping people live healthy, helping people invest for themselves in a successful way. And all that information is a vast reservoir that actually works. And you don't need an education to be able to do it. The common person can do it for themselves because I've done it for myself and I'm still doing it for myself. It might be a little bit more erroneous today, what's against you, but you learn the way the way it all works and you can still beat the systems. So it's up to the person themselves whether they want to invest in their own health, in their own wealth and their own joy of life so that they can live their life and they have an avenue to explore it with pointoflife.com. That's their avenue. And if anybody wants to share it with other people, you know, you can download it and give it to thousands of other people. Give it to them for free. Share it with people. I'm happy for you to give it away free. Once you've got the information, give it to as many people as you can. Really, really good, Mr. Mike. So, Mr. Mike, thank you so much for your valuable time. It was a great okay. experience for all of us. And we look forward for the next round of discussion on some new topics. Right. Okay. Well, by then, in another year's time, in a year's time, if you followed and listened to what I've said, you'll be well on the path for your own success to find. I'm sure you'll do very well. Sure, sure, Mr. Mike. Okay. You're a nice guy. I wish you the best for the future. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Mike. Thank All you. the best now. Yeah.